All right, so uh, I guess uh, I just got a note that said everybody was waiting on me. Uh, lo and behold, I was in another meeting that I thought was this one. So uh, welcome to fall 2020, where technology sometimes works in our favor and sometimes just causes confusion and delay. Uh, my name is Vince Lowry. I'm the Director of Student Success and Engagement here at UW-Green Bay. I am also the uh, Director of the Gateways to Phoenix Success Program. Um, we are going to, to talk today about some of the support services that are available to students here at University of Wisconsin-Green Bay. Uh, among them today that will be discussed uh, will be um, academic advising. Uh, the Learning Center, and Disability Services. And so what we'll do is we'll have each of those uh, representatives from each of those offices, the directors of those offices, to talk a little bit about the services that they provide, um, how you can access them. Uh, we do have the opportunity for you to ask questions. So if you utilize uh, the little chat bubble there, you can post questions. Um, uh, we'll also uh, should have a chance at the end to answer any questions that you might have, but the chat's always open. You can always post there. You don't uh, need to have your cameras on. Don't feel compelled to have your cameras on. Our presenters will. Um, and uh, and so we'll go ahead and get started. And so we're going to go. I don't know where Daryl took off. I'm trying to navigate my screen there. So, Daryl, if you want to jump in with academic advising, if I go in alphabetical order, Academic advising is first. So we'll go academic advising, disability services, and then the learning center. So Daryl, take it away. Sounds great. Can everybody hear me okay? Good, great. Um, as Vince stated, my name is Daryl Renier. I'm the director of advising and retention here at the university. Um, I have a rhetorical question for all the students that are watching this um, right now. How many of you wanna graduate on time as efficiently and cheaply as possible? And usually I say that and then I look for hands because it's a trick question. Uh, all of you should have your hands up when it comes to that. The reason I always lead off with that question is because your academic advisor is there to help you do that very thing. What your advisor is for you is an advocate. Your advisor is a champion. It's someone that you can turn to, whether your questions are about course scheduling, whether they're about finding resources on campus, whether it's just having an ear if something's going on. Um, you know, I've been with the university almost 20 years, and in the 20 years, there are a couple things that I hold true that I want to share with you. I think they're tips for students, um, having met with as many students as I have over the years. The first one is the, the students who graduate more efficiently and effectively and quickly do it because they become resourceful. And that's really what these GBO sessions are about. They're, we want to develop your resourcefulness as a student. All of us, regardless of our situations, are going to go through some tough times and it's going to happen for you in college. There's no doubt about that. But know that you're not alone and you're gonna be hearing some from some other individuals um, in, this, uh, in this half hour chat that are really here to help you in many ways continue on, to, to forge ahead, to kind of fight through the times that you know the, the balance between work and home just, it's not quite there. And your advisor is very, very much there for you to do that. If you go back about 10 years historically with academic advising, we were always about course scheduling and we still are, and it's important. But now more than ever in the last few years, there's been a real shift in what an advisor helps you to do. And that, and that, that work now encompasses so many more areas um, than it did before, and rightly so it should. So all of you are assigned a uh, academic advisor based on the first year seminar that you're in. So you're going to be meeting, you probably heard from that advisor already, and if you didn't, trust me, by this week you will. But know as you're going through your classes that if a question comes up, if you have to make a schedule change, if something seems a little, um, you know, if you go to a class and you're finding, you're having a hard time finding that balance, reach out to your academic advisor. We are there for you. Uh, and it's, and we've all been there uh, at the university. So it's important for us to make sure that you stay on track. There will be bumps in the road. And those bumps are going to make you better students. They're going to make you more successful. So I'll leave it at that. All right. I guess I'll just keep going on and I'll talk about disability services. I'm Lynn Nemi. I'm the director of disability services. I put in the chat um, our website. I can also um, share our website. I think and I hope you're seeing it. 
Um, anyway, um, we work with students with disabilities who need accommodations um, and due to disability. So students can apply. They can apply for academic or housing accommodations. And how they can apply is really easy. They just can click on the application that they need. So students um, can get services from us. And we I always say we do nothing special. We just provide equal access for students. So I think it's really important to say, you know, we just want students to show what they know, get the grades that they've earned. So it's really important for students, you know, if they do have a disability, which what might be um, the number one disability or the top three disabilities that we serve, I'll always say are invisible disabilities. So you don't necessarily know by looking at the students. So mental health is our number one disability. And then ADHD, or in learning disabilities can go two and three um, and other health. So someone may have a health impairment that they may need some accommodations. So they may need more time to take a test, distraction reduced. Um, we have a new great new um, assistive tool for note taking called Glean that we're really excited to, to showcase and show how it can help you be a better note taker. And then, um, of course, we hire like sign language interpreters and provide any materials accessible. So we really want students to get our service. Um, we try to make it pretty easy. It's myself, James, and Kim. And then we have office assistants who are very helpful. Um, so you can contact us. You can apply online. We can get everything going. And we want to work with you. So if you know, if you need accommodations or know of a student, you, a friend who's talking about it again share our resources so they can come in and get service so that's what i have any questions or we want to wait till the end yeah take it sherry well, let's sherry uh, go on and then we'll go back around the horn hello everybody sherry aren't here I'm director of the Learning Center, which is the space where you would come to request tutoring in a subject class or writing assistance help. Um, some of you are probably enrolled in some of the Writing Foundations courses. And my girlfriend, Dr. Jenny Young, is the director of that side of the Learning Center. Uh, this semester, of course, as many of you know, due to uh, COVID-19, many of my over 35 student tutors decided to some study in their own locations and a few are here in Green Bay. So we are offering all of our services virtually this semester. So I'm going to start by sharing a form if I can find it. And um, I would like to at least show you what type of things that the Learning Center is going to offer you this semester. Can you see my screen? I think it's a few page delay, a few seconds delay. Someone give me a shout out if you can see it. Good. All right. So um, what you're looking at is a document that tells you the two easy ways to look for tutoring help through the Learning Center. So you have to think of the first way uh, as using our virtual tutors. Now, Vince, can you chime in? Um, have you told all these students about EAB Navigate and how we use it to schedule? So, yeah, so Navigate something that, that uh, you should have been introduced to um, at various points throughout GBO. And hopefully this is not the first time you've heard about it um, during GB Welcome. Uh, and a couple of emails have gone out, a few videos have been posted. Uh, you can find the Navigate app by searching your app store. Uh, look for Navigate Students, and then once you download it, utilize your UWGB username and password, the same things you use to access your email, uh, SIS, Canvas, all those things, um, and that will get you logged in and set up. It's, a, it's an amazing tool. It's a tool that is going to, as the name suggests, help you navigate your way through UWGB. And a tool like that is more important now than ever. So if you're sitting, listening, pull out your phone. If you don't already have Navigate, pull your phone out, search your app store and download, download right now. Good, thanks Vince. That's your um, public service announcement from Professor Lori. Um, the EAV Navigate app is the way that you're going to be able to really quickly seek out a tutor for the courses in which you are enrolled. 
and those courses that we support with our on-campus tutoring. Um, if you cannot figure out exactly how to schedule a tutor, um, I think you will be, but if you need help, we have a learning center, TLC, virtual front desk that will be staffed starting tomorrow between 9.30 in the morning and six o'clock at night. And those uh, receptionists who are staff of mine will help you to schedule an appointment with them over the phone or by contacting the sttutor1 email address, um, sttutor1 at uwgb.edu. Um, the second easy way to find access for help with tutoring is to make a free account, and all our services are free, with BrainFuse. So BrainFuse is the um, online vendor that we and Dr. Jenny Young in the Writing Center have decided to utilize. Um, it is a really, really slick, slick uh, company that allows you to get up to six hours per month of tutoring. And you can even request a few minutes of tutoring. Um, there is a BrainFuse app um, you don't have to ask for sessions that are 30 minutes or 60 minutes long. Um, you can just ask a question to a live tutor and get a reply. Or you can submit a paper and within 24 hours, that paper draft will be returned with suggestions. Again, it's BrainFuse, so um, the link here is on the site and it's also listed on the Learning Center website. Uh, we are on social media. Um, yours truly is the poster, so I have to um, remind myself to tweet and uh, get on Facebook and do all those fun things. Um, I follow my daughters, so that's a way for me to stay hip in their eyes. So I'm willing to chat with you guys using those social media tools too. And just so you know, like Daryl said, Director of Advising, you have to use the resources and we're free, we're fun, the tutors are students just like you on the Learning Center side. Uh, the BrainFuse tutors are, already have their degree and they're working in the areas that they're passionate about. So it's up to you to look to us for help. Can I answer any questions? Again, to remind everybody you can utilize the chat feature uh, to post questions. I also want to note, uh, Daryl pointed out uh, that uh, the Navigate tool also comes in handy when uh, scheduling um, uh, uh, appointments with your advisors. Um, it's literally, those appointments are literally just a few clicks away. You're able to see your advisor schedule, how it aligns with your own schedule. Um, this is going to be a tool that you're going to see us utilize a lot more this coming year. It's going to be a way for us to, to um, get outreach uh, to you, to connect with you, um, but also a way for you to connect with us. And so it's really important that you take time, uh, whether you have a tablet, smartphone, um, you can also access a desktop version. Um, there are a variety of different ways for you to access the Navigate tool. Um, and so you definitely, if you haven't already done it, be sure to do it because there's nothing like having that information um, right in your hand. And again, it's gonna be a way for us to connect with you, but you to also connect with us. So, um, uh, Daryl, I know you're on social media, so uh, and and you have the amazing honor to for your office to be at advising. So um, I don't know, you know, I don't know how you pulled that off, but we were on there early enough years and years ago. I have to spend uh, send a special thanks out to our previous social media director who said, you know what, I heard about this Twitter thing, and I think we need to be on it right away. And sure enough, grab the ad advising Twitter handle. So we are there and we're posting on that, you bet. And and just so everybody uh, knows, both those that are in the, in the meeting and those who are going to be listening after the fact, um, one of the things that we're going to be doing this year um, that Daryl's team will be doing is utilizing the social media platform to promote different majors across campus. And so you'll be able to find out a lot about your options for majors, for minors, certificates, on and on and on through that platform. So more reason to stay connected through all the different ways that we are we are linking up with you. Um, any questions out there? I could certainly ask a million questions, but I, I, I prefer to get questions. I think um, you guys have gotten a lot of information here. 
But again, you can you can ask a question in the chat or you can chime in um, via audio if you'd like. So I'll I'll go ahead and ask a question, and I think Daryl, you kind of tipped to this, and Sherry, I think you you kind of spoke to it, and Lynn, I, I, you know, I think you you would speak to this as well. You think about all the students that you've worked with over the years, and and you you know you've seen students in a variety of different ways, worked with students in a variety of different capacities. Um, what when we talk about accessing resources? What tends to be the number one barrier to students accessing resources, right? Because it would seem you've all three of you have made fantastic arguments, laying out, look at what we do, come to us, come see us. What's the thing that each of you have seen that maybe prevents students from from accessing resources? And we'll just go in the same order we started in. So Daryl, Lynn, and and then Sherry. Yeah, for, that's a really excellent question. For me, many times, you know, I when I began as the director of advising, um, advising can seen as, be seen a little bit as kind of a stuffy place to be, right? Where academic policy and procedure and, you know, uh, all those, you know, requirements, and it can be kind of boring. But I think what you'll find is you connect with your advisor more and more that that advisor even though we deal with policy and procedure, and sometimes it's just difficult to make that stuff fun, right? Um, we're still there for you. And I think if there's anything that I've had students say to me over the years, you know, they'll sit down and they'll go, wow, it was just nice chatting with you and realizing that, you know, you're, you're kind of as down to earth as, you know, as anyone else would be. And it, it, it's not like, I think sometimes students feel like in order to visit your academic advisor, it's got to be like you're missing a requirement or, you have a question about an academic policy. It's just so much more than that, as I said before, that for me, it seems like as soon as you can connect with your assigned advisor, you know you've got a, an advocate for you throughout the years. I've had students who have come back in their senior year to me from time to time just to ask a question. They'll say, Daryl, this seems like a silly question, and I know we haven't spoken in a while, right? Uh, but they'll say, I, I have a question about a particular requirement or a graduation requirement. I'm still there for them for that. So always remember that you're always guided by advising. And maybe this is something I should have brought up earlier, but you're all going to stay with the same advisor throughout the first year. All right. You'll have your first year seminar advisor for that first year. For those of you who are declared, you have you, you will have a faculty advisor as well. A faculty advisor is a specialist in your academic area. So if you're a business, if you declared business, you'll have a faculty advisor of business who can talk with you about internships, jobs, sequencing in the upper level courses, knows the business field and has expertise there. But you'll also have your first year advisor who's there just to answer the questions and make sure that you're persisting on um, and giving you that boost when you need it. Um, and know that that's a shared responsibility, that we work together in that regard. Uh, the other thing that I'll add real quickly, Vince, since I've got the, I got the floor right now, is that if you think you may change your major in the first semester, that is okay. Students often change their major. I think it's, I think research demonstrates it's over 60% of students at least change their major once. And if you're thinking about that as you get into fall, don't worry about it. We are going to be there. We're going to be doing what, uh, you know, uh, Vincent talked about, about social media, getting majors exploration out to you and doing those kinds of things. But that's what I would say. I would say sometimes they just see the academic advisor as well. This person only helps me with classes. No, we do so much more than that. Yeah, the de the idea of success at UW-Green Bay is holistic, not just academic. We want to see you thrive outside the classroom as well. We want you to be a thriving member of our community. And your advisors take this, as Daryl laid out, your advisors take the same holistic approach. Yeah, Lynn, I wonder if you could speak to this point too, right? What prevents students from taking that leap, right? right. Taking that step. Well, I think if they've had if they've had accommodations in high school, they've they have may not been in charge of their accommodations. They don't understand that here it's all, you know, you're in charge of your whole education. So we're here to help facilitate accommodations for you, but not we're not intrusive. We're not going to be, you know, it's really up to you to decide. So I think that gives you gives you the connective power to do that. 
also, I think sometimes students who, who struggled maybe in high school, but didn't get accommodations, didn't realize they could get accommodations in college. You know, I would say less than half of our students had accommodations necessarily in high school, had an IEP or a 504 plan. So, you know, because again, mental health, anxiety, depression, some of those things come a little bit later in life, you know, and later in life for a, a college age student. So they may not know that they could use accommodation. I just can't take that test in that classroom. I, I just start getting very nervous nervous and um, I start having a panic attack or I start needing that. So sometimes students don't realize that, oh, I could come to disability services. So as you might be going to the wellness center, hopefully they'll be encouraging you. I mean, again, they can't tell you to come, but encouraging you to maybe look at all your resources. We can also just be like, hey, you know, like all of our panelists, we've all been here almost 20 plus years. So we all have a lot of vested interest in UW-Green Bay. We really care about our students. We want students to come in and we hope you do. Um, it's nothing to be, we're nothing special. We're just about equal access. This is your right to get, to show what you know. So I think that's the change from high school to college for, for I see in my world where students are feeling like they shouldn't come in because, but really they should, because you're paying a lot of money. You should be able to get the grades you've earned. Yeah, and I, I really appreciate you bringing up this point. We we facilitated a session on self-advocacy yesterday and it, it had come up. One of the students said in high school, my mom made all the phone calls. My mom checked in with the school, right? And so for for that student, for Asia, you know, she was telling the story and saying, look, you know, there came a point when I got to college where I had to start making those phone calls. I had to start knocking on those doors. And that's a really important life lesson, right, to take that leap. And as Lynn said, you're taking that leap ultimately to maximize your ability to, to be successful, to get out of your education, what you put in. Yeah. Sherry, what about what about you? What, what do you see in your office? What's what is key? I mean, now we have to say uh, uh, at your virtual doors instead of mm -hmm. walking through your virtual yeah. doors. But yeah. historically, keeping mm -hmm. you from walking through the, the learning center. I don't think um, students I, I know when I was a student, I didn't want to admit that I really needed a little bit of help. I needed another support person. I needed another person in my squad, as Vince says oh, with his term. So the tutor is not only going to help the person who's looking for help in the content area or to answer your concept question, but the tutor is going to also be another study buddy, a study aid, somebody you can ask, you know, I'm having a roommate issue. What do you think I might do? Just as a, you know, that kind of thing. Um, we want the rapport to be built with our tutors. And once they get to know you, they'll see you in the hall and they'll just be waving it as another, hey, I know you, you know, why wouldn't you like to come and use us for that reason too? So uh, think of us as a, a learning center resource, resource that helps you thrive. And now you Help can do it on, the, on your phone. Help has become this four letter word, right? It's this dirty word. Nobody wants, nobody wants to, you know, there's such this hesitance what I the the line I always tell students and Sherry, I think you you know, and Lynn and Daryl, you've all spoken to this and pr could probably talk about countless students who illustrate this. Nobody gets through college on their own. Nobody. It does not happen. It just doesn't happen. And the the people who have the smoothest transition, the people who have you know get to the end of four years and say that was amazing, or five years, however long it takes, that was amazing. I got so much out of that. They're getting so much out of it because they're going to see Daryl's group. They're going to, to Lynn's office and working with her team. They're going to Sherry's office and they're yeah. working with her tutors. They've built this squad. You know, Sherry's used my word here. They have built this squad around them because those people aren't just helping with one issue in that moment. They're that point of reference. They're that person that will help open doors to other opportunities and help smooth the transition in other ways. And so we wanted to be sure we had these sessions to include a session on academic resources to, to not only introduce the resources, but introduce this idea uh, to everybody. So we have just like two minutes left. I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna hand the floor over. We're gonna go back around. So I'm gonna put Sherry back on the spot. One piece of advice, one quick piece of advice that you would give 
to those students in the room and those students who are going to watch later, what's one piece of advice that you feel like if you can give that one, tell everybody in the class of 2024, that one thing that you feel like will help them, they should carry with them. What's that one thing? Make your own appointments. Yeah. All right. Lynn. Mine would be get a planner and actually use it. I think that's really helpful. Sure. Well, I will second that. I will definitely second that. Yeah, Daryl. Persist. You're going to, you're, there are going to be times you get knocked down. Just get back up. Know that we're help, We're there to help you do that. Sure. So we actually, you guys finished in time and we got a question. So that's outstanding. So I, I see Michael has his hand up. So I'm going to, I'm going to let Michael go ahead and ask a question. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right. So basically, my understanding is that I just make an appointment and navigate, and I will be sent to one of you guys to help me with the tutoring and everything. Or you will select in navigate a tutor that has availability that meets the time you can meet. Michael. Okay. So Sounds the good. navigate is that smart that it's going to let you know exactly when a tutor is available. If you want to meet for thirty minutes or an hour, and the day of the week the time of the day, basically. It, the tutors are students too, but that's how you do it. Yeah. Okay, yep, just, I just wanted to make sure, so thank you. No, I'm glad you did. Great, great question. You helped others too. Oh, I was so close to getting through without talking while muted. Um, so I'll just close by saying your first year seminars, if, you, if you're enrolled in a first year seminar this fall, that will be another opportunity to get to no resources. Um, I've already recorded an interview with Sherry. I need to schedule them with uh, with Daryl and with Lynn um, as a follow up to this. Uh, but I think the big thing is to know that you're not alone. Nobody gets through college alone. You have all kinds of resources available to you. And so the last thing I'll just ask really quickly is if each of our panelists, who I want to thank very much for taking time today, would enter uh, your email address just very quickly in the chat. I will also email mine or enter mine. Um, I'm always a resource for students, problems large and small. All right, so thank you all so much. We're gonna conclude today's session. Everybody have a great day. Uh, two o'clock Canvas session. This is actually gonna be a Microsoft Live uh, Microsoft Teams live event, getting to know the online learning environment. Thank you all so much for attending and for participating.